Hello, everyone, and welcome to this overview of the SI Portal. SI Portal stands for Systems Integration Portal, and in essence, the name shows our age. Our product started before managed services was a coined term, and internally we began referencing it as our Systems Integration Portal. Similarly to how a healthcare provider needs patient records, IT needs information about networks and their devices. SI Portal allows IT staff to locate information about the networks they manage, information like documents, contacts, applications, accounts and passwords, licenses, and most importantly, network devices, also known as the patients if we continue this analogy about healthcare providers. Hopefully, by the end of this presentation, you will get a sense as to how you can simplify your IT operations with proper documentation in the SI portal. I'm going to try to give you a quick overview of the product. I'll talk a bit about SI portal as a company. I will touch on a few key differences between our two service offerings, and to close, I will review the navigation and list the existing features of the product. This is a university campus. In the portal, we would call this a site. In a campus, you have buildings. In the portal, we call these facilities. Among and between these facilities exist networks. In the portal, we document these as IP networks. In a particular facility, you may have a data center with servers and network equipment. In the portal, we allow you to define the sites, facilities, IP networks, and rack cabinets that a device belongs to. You can even specify a specific location, like Unit 21 through Unit 25, or Backroom Closet. You can document login accounts, documents, and KB articles for technical procedures agreements, certificates and licenses, configuration items like SSIDs, shared folders, websites, FTP sites, and domain names. You can also document people who exist in the organization. One or two engineers who work with this client may know all this information, and, if you are lucky, you may have some internal system tracking some or all of this but it will not bring it all together like the SI portal does. The SI portal has a feature called Relationships that allows you to show how objects relate to each other. For example, you may document a site. In that site, you can see all the devices in the site, and with Relationships, you can see the key people to contact if an issue arises at that site. When setting up a new server, you should document the server, obviously, but you should also document the different access methods and login accounts. Any documentation that was created regarding the setup should also be linked to this server. While viewing any of these objects, you instantly see all the other objects that relate to it. When documenting an application, you should link the key developers, the web and SQL servers, the accounts used for administrative functions, and the documentation and technical KB articles relating to the app. You should also link any support contracts to ensure support is maintained. SI Portal was incorporated in 2007, but the portal was first incubated in 2005 by a service delivery company in Florida. In 2005, their sales were a bit over a million dollars a year. Through natural growth, they are projecting $15 million in sales for 2016 and stand as the largest data center network in Florida. The infrastructure for cloud services in the U.S. is privately held, in a private cloud, running behind clusters of VMware, ESXi hosts, and on a multi-rack HP3 Parsan. Our product is completely SQL and IIS driven, and 
we offer our solution in both a cloud and an on-premise solution. In 2005, we had a small archaic app that met our needs. We focused on documenting sites and the devices within them, contacts, licenses, login accounts, and documents. We started documenting passwords and migrating over our good old Excel password list. When SI Portal was incorporated in 2007, we redesigned and released a new version to the public, introducing agents to collect data from an Active Directory domains. Here, you see a quick synopsis view showing all objects for all companies in the portal. In 2008, before LTE, we released an iPhone version. It had the benefit of syncing the entire portal for offline use. Fast forward a few years, and we migrate our platform to a newer, more responsive interface that was better suited for today's desktops, tablets, and phones. We have two service offerings, two flavors of our cloud solution, and an on-premise solution. Our cloud service allows for a quick startup, as we have a good portion of the setup automated for you. We do limit the storage to 2 gigabytes per user, hence 10 gigabytes for 5 users. All your passwords and documents are encrypted with your encryption key while active and at rest. We typically release updates every quarter. The first cloud option is a secure, multi-tenant environment similar to many PSAs. The second is a dedicated environment which allows you to move to on-premise if needed. We also allow you to run the portal on-premise, giving you complete control. Your storage runs the portal, hence there are no storage limitations. You use your own encryption keys, and we do not have access to any of your data. Updates are provided as needed, and you can always move to our cloud. I will soon go into the features of the portal, but first I would like to spend a minute going over the basic navigation of the landing page. Later you will see what a customer's landing page looks like. We provide full branding options. A listing of all companies and company groups is provided for quick navigation. When logging in, you will see numbers next to items telling you if there are new or edited items. Use the calendar as well to backtrack. Notifications of expiring items. Command line interface. Full keyword search bars. Advanced search options. Add and import menu options. Personal settings for users and full admin control panel for administrators. Custom menu items. Items you recently accessed. A password list is made available to password admins. Quick navigation to all devices in the portal. Quick navigation of all services. Quick navigation of all documents. And a quick navigation of all configuration items. Now I would like to go over the features of the portal. In this screen, you see the synopsis of a company. You are provided contact information, general notes, and remote access information. The notes can be configured to pop up to warn users of any billing or service issues. The synopsis for a company also shows you a general listing of the stored objects. Key to the portal is the ability to define services and apply them to devices, so you can quickly see the three DHCP servers or the two exchange servers in an environment. In the synopsis page, 
we now provide an onboarding template. With this template, you can note what items have been documented. You can edit this template or create your own and apply them to any type of objects like devices, configuration items, etc. The sample above only shows yes-no radio buttons, but a variety of field options are also available. When documenting a site or a facility, you get general information. You also get a synopsis screen showing the objects residing in that site or facility. Provided is a complete listing of all existing devices. Tabs are provided to list the IP networks and the relationships. In this case, here we see the wireless info for the site, as well as key contacts. While editing a site, you can also designate a document as being the diagram of the site, and, if it is an image, the portal will display it on the screen. Here we see an IP network with its relevant information, as well as all the IPs on that network. Some devices may be listed multiple times, as devices can have multiple IP addresses defined in the portal. You can also group devices by domains. Here we see this company has two domains. When clicking a domain, you get the devices listed in that domain. We give you a few options to import data. You can import users and contacts from AD. When scheduled, the agent will compare the portal with AD and automatically add and remove any AD user or contact. We can also import devices, IP networks, and sites defined in Active Directory. You can also schedule this to periodically add new devices. Devices can also be imported using your RMM tool. You simply tell the RMM to execute our agent file on these computers. It collects the data, sends it to the portal, and then quits. It does not stay resident on the servers or computers. For all portal objects, you can also import using import files. For example, you can easily import 1,000 Word documents into our product using an Excel-compatible import file and simply dragging and dropping any attached documents into the portal. Additional on-premise features include the ability to restrict logins by IP. For example, you can say 192.168.0.0/24 is blocked. You can also say any IP that is not 192.168.0.0/24 will require the use of two-factor authentication. Since our product is SQL driven, you can use SQL mirroring or log shipping to replicate the instance to a remote site. We also give you the option to use Active Directory to authenticate some or all of your users. I'll now highlight some of the additional features focusing on security. Portal Sync allows you to make an offline copy of your portal, which you can run on a server or laptop. You can schedule it to sync changes. Our mobile app is available on the App Store and Google Play. The app allows you to save your credentials to quickly access the information you need. Eight large buttons are provided to find what you are looking for. Clicking Device gives you five search options. The keyword option will search all devices for the existence of the keywords entered. A search for Blade Chassis is displayed on screen. When clicked, the device is displayed on screen with all the information provided in the portal. The portal allows you to brand the page to show your customers a higher level of professionalism with the information you hold for them.
configure the portal to alert via email on login failures, successful logins, expiring accounts, expiring agreements, expiring device warranties, and expiring KB articles. You can also set the portal to send you alerts when data changes in the portal. Security logs include reviewing user access, access to the admin console, successful and failed logins. They also include access to passwords and a full history of password changes. Here, you can set ACLs on objects, for example, a firewall. You can set ACLs on a group of objects, like all firewalls or all devices. You can also set ACLs at a company level, ensuring only a subset of your portal users have access. A full recovery and purge menu is provided to admins. All objects in the portal that are marked for deletion go into a special recycle bin. Admins can recover or purge the deleted objects. Two-factor authentication options include Google Authenticator, Auth Anvil, Radius, and our own two-factor authentication we created back in 2007. We also give you the ability to add custom fields. Above, we see the wireless configuration with custom SSID fields. Groupings of custom fields in the portal are called templates. You can apply custom fields and templates to all objects or to a subset of objects. Well, the journey has been long and we appreciate you sticking with us to the end. Please see our website at www.siportal.com and fill out our contact forms if you have additional questions. Thank you, and go document IT.